<laughs> Sean Williams with VandySports.com. I had to laugh just because when I hit record, just an angel cheeses for the camera there. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy. Man. We are continuing with our uh, YouTube uh, TV talk series, whatever the, whatever you want to call it. It's Vandy Sports. Just check out our YouTube channel, Vandy Sports. Uh, like us, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the bell for your notifications. And if we'll have this uh, video up pretty soon, actually probably later tonight. Uh, so we're going to do some fun things with the YouTube channel, like I said, when I, I did the video this weekend, and uh, we're going to continue that. Do a lot of uh, recruiting stuff, uh, recruiting-based stuff on these videos. So that's why I've got the man, the myth, the legend, Justin Angel, surrounded by red-headed women. That's how he likes it. <laughs> <He's>, Absolutely. <laughs> he is joining us on uh, on this recruiting podcast. We're going to kind of dive in a little bit and then talk specifically uh talk specific position groups about the 2021 class that was just signed. Obviously, that was finalized uh, earlier this month. Uh, we're going to obviously start off with Justin's bread and butter, the 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 position he loves the best, as they say. That's right. <laughs> Offensive, line. Talk about <laughs> Offensive line. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to block. I mean, there's no offense. So, <laughs> right. I mean, that's what we got to start with. Right, so Justin, it's been a while uh, since, you know, you've been on the site here and there, but uh, we brought you back in video form. What's it like to be back doing a TV show-esque on our YouTube channel right now? Sounds good, man. It's been away for a little bit, but it's good to be back. Anytime I'm talking football, man, it's good stuff. So there you go. Cutting into my bowling schedule a little bit right now. Yeah, so. you uh, obviously, that's why I put the, the bowling icon up there, because you're a bowler now, so... Uh, I've got the bowling icon true. by your name. I also got a Pinocchio nose just because, you know, hell, I just felt like putting a Pinocchio nose next to your name. So that's just how I roll, man. Well, I'd be lying if I said I was good at bowling. So I guess that works out pretty good. <laughs> so it's been a while since I've been bowling. I do have a unique uh, backhanded style. And uh, most of the time, it doesn't serve me well, though. So I'll admit that. Well, the other night in league play, I bowled a 299. So. That's, it just it took me three games to get to two ninety nine, but that's what I bought. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> I was waiting for uh, I was waiting for something there. I, I didn't think you bowed like a two ninety nine in one game, man. No, I did not. No, uh, I, I have got up to a one eighty six, but that's, that's that's about it. Right, right. not very good at bowling. So. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, we're gonna do hopefully do some good stuff and and stuff like this, and we'll, we'll probably focus more on. Uh, the other positions uh, that signed in the 2021 class moving forward. But this this one in particular, we're going to focus on the offensive line. Like I said, that's Justin's bread and butter. He loves talking about the Hogs. He was a, a parade All-American at Gordonsville High School. Is that right? Wink, wink. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm we didn't have a parade All-Americans. <laughs> 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 I made that up, uh, Parade All American part, but you did <laughs> you did play a lot at Gordonsville High School, so yes, I did. Yeah, so and we did beat uh, Boyd Buchanan, who was a uh, quarterback, was Will Healy there at one time. Oh too. yeah, that's, that's my name when Take I was that. in high school. Take that, all you Hewlett lovers out there, just an that's right. Head and he came back the next year and beat us for about thirty at, <laughs> at home. So. But uh, <laughs> we lost, beat him one time. We lost some seniors, man. You know, uh, just things happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's right all right good deal and obviously you coach offensive line at lebanon high school right now so you can i'm, I'm throwing out your credentials there so if you want to add anything to that's that right. feel free yeah a little blue devil pride there so all right all right so like i said uh we are going to focus and talk about the 2021 class specifically the offensive line signees um, three of the four are already on campus, which that's a good thing for Vanderbilt moving forward, considering, well, the offensive line attrition this past year. <laughs> uh, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, let me change the screen here. Like I said, this is new, so we're going to be kind of learning on the fly here. This is the first interview session of this new software I'm using, so it took me a, it took a prayer to get Justin Angel on the screen here. So <laughs> we're going to switch over here. <laughs> All right, first up, we're going to talk about Jake Keshik. Uh, obviously, uh, from New Jersey, St. Augustine up there. They only played three games this past season. Obviously, COVID issues kind of hit that state pretty hard, and they pushed football back. They, were, they did play some football. But I think they got three or four games in. 
Uh, I think he played in three. I think they had some scheduling issues with some of their other games. But uh, go ahead, Justin, go ahead. Well, I was just saying, you know, they only played three games. Um, but once we get into the film, I'll talk a little bit about him. Uh, he's definitely an interior guy. Uh, you know, when you get into watching this film, I think he could possibly play right tackle, but he looks more like a, a guy that's going to play guard once he gets to the next level. Yeah, when he committed, uh, just talking to him, he said, you know, um, Coach Rossimano, obviously that, that was his connection. Uh, Peter Rossimano, the old uh, O-line coach now, um, obviously uh, spent some time up at Rutgers that one year and then uh, was the head coach at Central Connecticut State. So he's got a lot of a lot of ties up there in the New Jersey area. But uh, I know when I talked to him, whenever he committed, he said, uh, you know, they liked him as a kind of a versatile interior lineman. So uh, you're kind of spot on right. with that. Obviously, they kind of, you know, Jake got on campus right before COVID hit. So he spent like, I think he spent like two or three days on campus uh, watching practice and things like that. And then, I mean, he pretty much knew he was committing uh, whenever he was coming to Nashville. He just wanted to kind of see everything in person uh, before he kind of finalized everything. But he committed while he was on campus uh, back on March 10th. And uh, I think he announced it maybe a couple days after he got back, but he uh, pretty much committed while he was on campus there. So let's take a look at Jake Keshik's senior highlights. So like I said, just three games. We're not going to watch the whole six minutes, by the way. We're just going to watch about a minute, minute and a half. And Justin, this will be your wheelhouse. Just talk, tell us what you see here, what you like about him and everything. Right. When you see him here, I mean, he's playing a lot of uh, – he's playing offensive tackle, so which is not something that he's going to do when he gets to Vanderbilt, of course. But – uh, he, he moves pretty decent, uh, not great, but you could see just, you know, kind of the way that he moves and stuff. He looks like he would be good for like a zone blocking scheme, those type things. Uh, you know, he plays with a decent technique. The only thing that you would like to see in this is you would like to see him drive, get a hold of somebody and move them down the field. Most of the movement that he's getting is mostly sideways and stuff, you know, but, Granted, he's only played three games compared to these other guys we're going to watch. It's played ten or more, you know, so that 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 hurts it just a little bit. But uh, you can definitely see, you know, he's a strong kid. Um, but he's definitely an interior guy. I I just thought watching this film that possibly could play right tackle, uh, but definitely an interior type guy. It's you know, it's always a good thing that he's playing left tackle that lets you know how much his uh, offensive line coach thinks of him in high school because that's typically where you put your best linemen. So right. regardless of what their skill set is, you know, typically. You mentioned, uh, you know, drive and mostly side-to-side movement. Like if he's going to play interior, obviously he's playing left tackle in high school. If he moves to the inside, what's the biggest adjustments he's going to have to make whenever he gets to college and playing guard and things like that? Well, just when you're getting movement and stuff, you want to see them taking a guy and moving him vertically, you know, not just getting the horizontal movement and that type of stuff. You know, typically you want to see, you know, guys that are really strong and really strong lower body-wise when they get their hands on people, there's movement going north and south. You're not seeing that a whole lot on here. Uh, When he gets in – when he gets into the next level and he's playing guard, you know, uh, he's the zone blocking schemes and even down blocking. I mean, you're going to be going against a lot of guys that are 290, 300, 310, you know, as far as three techniques, one techniques, those type things. Uh, and those guys are athletic as well. So, you know, you, you want to see movement at the high school level. So usually that translates to once you get to the next there. All right, good stuff, Justin. That is a little glimpse of Jake Keshik, his senior highlights here. We'll, we'll stop those. Move on to our next guy, who is also an out. By the way, Keshik's one of the early enrollees at Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt had nine um, this past signing class, which is virtually unheard of. And I don't know if that had a lot to do with COVID, uh, just overall attrition, things like that. I don't know. But uh, it's kind of good to see that Vanderbilt did get nine media releases. Usually, usually we're used to dealing with uh, three. You know, that's kind of the standard bear, and there's no more than that. So, uh, But next guy up is uh, Gage Pitchford. He's another one that committed relatively early during the summer um, uh, from East Coweta, Georgia. They had a really good season. Um, 
But once again, recruited by uh, Ross Amando. Had some pretty decent offers. You know, you look at Arizona State. Uh, let's see. Kansas, Kansas, uh, Kent State, Mississippi State, UAB, South Florida. Auburn was showing interest. Virginia was showing interest. So there's Gage had 17 offers. Rated three stars, six foot six, 290. Gage Pitcher. What do you kind of see from him? You know, whenever, whenever he committed, Justin, what did you kind of think about him just in terms of the size and everything like that? Well, one thing is he's really athletic. If you just watch his film and those type things, you can see that. Uh, also comes from a family where his dad played college football at Troy. You know, that's always something that you look at. Uh, but if you're uh, if you're watching his film, uh, something I really like is, is you can see him pull. He does a lot of the counter stuff, getting to the next level. Uh, you can see that, you know, he's got a good frame there. I mean, you're going to be able to add to that. And uh, something he does really well as far in the run game, too, in addition to pulling is, is he is a really good at down blocking. He can down block. You can just see that he gets on a guy's heel and he gets a lot of movement and uh, doing those things. And also when he's down blocking, just like on that play right there, I mean, he's getting to a linebacker. Okay. The only thing that you don't really see here is much pass blocking. And, uh, you know, just something that he is with 6'6", 290, tall, lengthy guy, uh, pretty athletic. You would think that that would be one of his strong suits. But you can still see the athleticism and things from the way that he pulls, which is good. Uh, you, you would just like to see some of the pass blocking and those things. Right. Uh, obviously, I think Vanderbilt liked him at tackle. I'm assuming that's where they kind of – what do you kind of see him at? You see him being a tackle or you see him kind of being a, a guy that can kind of do a little bit of everything on the line? Well, I think he's 100% a, a right or left tackle. I don't I don't think that he can really do the, the interior things. Uh, most of the time when you're running zone schemes, and, you know, we don't know what Vanderbilt's going to run. Usually you want bigger bodies that can get movement in there. You don't really see that in his game. Uh, he's more of an athlete, get out and pass block and do those things because uh, he's got the athleticism to do those. You know, maybe his high school didn't really throw it a whole lot, so you don't see those things. But you can see that he's got the intangibles and things to do that. So, all right, good stuff there. That's Gage Pitchford. We'll take a little closer look at him. And we'll move on to the next one. Uh, Delphin Castillo. Everybody calls him Xavier. Uh, I think Xavier is his middle name. But uh, a pretty big get right here. Uh, obviously, he was he was actually playing uh, football in Maryland, and he actually ended up transferring to back to Florida. I think he was originally from Florida. And uh, – transferred down to Osceola and played this past year. Obviously, they they were having some uh, issues in Maryland in, in terms of playing high school football. So, he, I think he went back home and just wanted a, a chance to have a senior season and uh, had a pretty good year this year. But I think the biggest thing that stuck out about him whenever he committed is his size. You know, you see he's six foot uh, five, three 340 pounds. Now, I think he's down to about 310 right now. I think he shed some weight uh, during the season and probably just in preparation to get to college and not be as heavy. But uh, – but yeah, I mean, uh, a pretty pretty good pickup again. Once again, Peter Rosamondo, uh, one of the uh, let's say he was one of the all star recruiters for uh, Vanderbilt last year, uh, just in terms of the connections he had and, and getting the guys he had. And you look at Casillo's, uh, you know, recruiting profile here. He had uh, a, a lot of Power Five offers from Georgia, uh, for Virginia Tech, Syracuse, Rutgers, Pitt, Michigan State. So uh, pretty good pickup there. Now we'll flip over and start watching his film, Justin, and you can chime in. Just tell us what you like about him or you kind of see him fitting. Well, in when you see him reach block at uh, 340 pounds here in this first clip, it'll fire you up pretty good. So uh, <laughs> most guys that are this big don't move like this. All right, getting out there out front. And early when I was talking about, you know, interior prospects, you know, or any offensive lineman at all, you want to see once they get hands on people, them getting movement vertically. And that's something that you see here with Xavier's film. When he's getting hands on people, they're moving. You know, I don't know if that's just where his size is or how strong he is, but you can definitely see 
he's moving people from point A to point B when they don't want to be moved. And that's something you definitely want to see. Uh, just watching his film, uh, he looks like he, he has it, just looking at it. Uh, he, he looks like he could play either guard position. I honestly think that just watching him and you see him pull there on the counter and getting to the next level, he could possibly play tackle as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, just – when you're blocking large human beings in the Southeastern Conference, which is what those guys do, it's always good to have somebody as big and has size like him as well, you know, which you know, they say he weighs 310. Now he's not 340 pounds as he was there. But, I mean, he could still put a little bit of weight on to what he's got to his 310-pound frame. And uh, I, I really like his film. It's good. It's good. Yeah, you really like it. What, what did you tell me before we hopped on uh, hit record here? What's that? About him. You said he was the best lineman, right? Yeah, I thought he was the best lineman that they signed. Yes, <laughs> just watching his film and stuff. And that's one thing, too, which we haven't really talked about and a lot of people. Due to them not having camps this past year, it changes – kind of how people recruit in those things. You know, most people aren't recruiting off a of film and, and doing that. Most of the time it's, all right, we see them in person at camp and you get to check them out and do those things. That just means that some of those guys are going to fly under the radar. That's probably a little bit better than what they are yeah. uh, where they're signing and then, you know, vice versa. So, but this one right here, just watching this film. Yes. I really like it. Yeah, man. Throw in, feel free to throw in the hot takes, man. It's okay. That's what television. <laughs> it's what good television's for, man. Come on. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> All right we'll uh, we'll flip it. We'll flip here and uh, focus on Gunnar Hansen. Uh, obviously a uh, St. Thomas Aquinas uh, prospect, and obviously you know Vanderbilt had great success with St. Thomas guys. I mean, they had three of them in this class. You know, you talk about Tyson Russell and Quincy Skinner as well. Um, you know, those three guys all signed with Vanderbilt. You know, Gunner doesn't have a lot. You know, you look at his offer sheet, Toledo, UNLV, but he was getting a lot of interest from some Power 5 schools. I think he uh, had a really good uh, Rivals camp. I mean, we didn't have – we didn't have Rivals didn't have a lot of camps this year. I mean, I think they had a, a couple in Florida and uh, maybe one in uh, California before COVID hit and everything. But uh, he, he had a really good camp down in Rivals, and I think he kind of caught uh, a lot of our scout ties down there and kind of got a little bit of, you know, people were looking at him, but obviously, you know, uh, wasn't able to visit, wasn't able to do any camps this summer. So kind of flew under the radar a little bit, but Vanderbilt really liked him, obviously with St. Thomas Aquinas ties, and uh, went ahead and extended an offer to him. So, um We'll take a look at his film, and Justin, you chime in here. This is going to be uh, – he didn't have a – he didn't put together a complete senior highlight. Right, game, he so. doesn't have a senior highlights. Right. So this so, is just coming from one game. Yeah, this is just coming from the American Heritage game, so it's a minute and 38 seconds. So, Justin, just kind of tell us what you kind of like about this film and what you see from Gunner here. Well, out of the signees that they have coming from high school, I thought that Gunner's film just shows that he plays with a little better technique than the other ones so far. So he's a, he's a little bit more polished than that. Um, I don't think he bends extremely well. He plays really high, which, you know, in high school, a lot of times when guys are taller, they do that. But, I, you know, that makes you wonder, is it lower body strength, whatever it is. But it, if that's what it is, they can always improve that. Uh, I do think that he is the best pass blocker of the uh, four that they have signed. Uh, I think just, you know, he does a good job which uh, of getting his arms out there, using his uh, length uh, on the edge, uh, does a good job. And a lot of times that comes back to, his technique is a little bit better than the others, you know, and you got technique and pass protection. That always helps out. Um, but yeah, you can see there, I mean, kick step and getting out there like he's supposed to. I mean, I, I do like that part of his game. Mm-hmm. If you were to rank, and you kind of mentioned this, I mean, obviously you mentioned uh, Xavier Castillo is probably your, your, the best lineman they signed. But if you were to rank them, uh, behind Castillo, where would you kind of rank this uh, signing class in terms of high school kids? In terms of high school kids, I would probably, you know, I, of course, Xavier Castillo, 
to start off, and then um, I would probably go Gage Pitchford next, and then I would go um, with uh, Jake Kessage, and then I would probably go Gunnar Hansen. Okay. Uh, and, I'll, and I think Hanson, you know, he's got some intangible – he's got some attributes there that he can go with as far as the size and those things. Uh, just typically a lot of your guys that are in high school that play with great technique, sometimes those guys don't develop or, and get a whole lot better. You know, they're just – they kind of are what they are. And then sometimes you see guys that are kind of raw that haven't been – you know, coached up like some of the others, uh, a lot of times those guys can just get better and better. So, you know, uh, I thought it was a pretty solid class. Um, definitely needed that at Vanderbilt. I thought Russell Mondo did a good job um, in the time that he was there. I mean, not only did he coach it up pretty well, but I thought he did a good job recruiting with this group as well. Yeah, I mean, I think we mentioned all throughout the class that probably the all-star recruiters were Russell Mondo and uh, Javon Hay. Obviously, Javon Hay is uh, staying on with uh, Clark Lee and his staff. Poor Russell Mondo is moving on. Don't know where he's going to end up. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, he did a good job of, of getting some guys in here that he liked. He already had relationships with and uh, you know, was able to kind of, you know, pounce on those guys and get them in the class. And they definitely need to, they definitely need some bodies. Uh, Vanderbilt does on the offensive line for next year. So, uh, right. And also, you know, people think you're crazy when you say, all right, you know, he did a good job coaching offensive line. Cause they say, Hey, they went Oh, and nine. And <laughs> this is what it is. But I mean, everybody thought that, especially with all the opt outs and right. just what he was inheriting, you know, the bar was pretty low there, but I mean, he, definitely exceeded expectations before the year we all thought defense is going to be decent offense not so good and then by the end of the year it was flip-flop you know right. and that's two of those guys that were coaching them up and they do a good job so yeah you got to look for bright spots in a you know a nine season so i think whatever when what ross Mondo was able to do with the offensive line that was severely depleted in, in terms of depth was was uh, pretty positive. So Right. When you're coaching in the Southeastern Conference and you got a defensive tackle that's converted to offensive lineman and he starts two weeks later, <laughs> yeah, that's not the ideal not, situation yeah. for an offensive line. Coach. Right. Not a not an ideal situation for an offensive line coach too. So you know. Uh, yeah. but we'll we'll uh, kinda turn the page and and talk about obviously uh, another mid year addition here. Obviously Gunnar Hansen was the only one that's uh, among the offensive linemen that's not a mid year enrollee, but uh junior Zubu uh from West Virginia uh got his uh, commitment article pulled up here from Vandysports.com. But obviously a, a guy with some experience, um a guy that was highly touted coming out of high school, ended up going to West Virginia uh, where do you kind of see him uh, fitting out? You know, at West Virginia, he started left tackle. Where, is that kind of where you see him maybe fitting in? And uh, do you see him be, becoming a starter? Or is he more of a depth guy to you, Justin? Uh, I think he's got the possibility to be a starter. Um, uh, one thing that when you look at him, he's like your prototypical left tackle. I don't think that he's just overly physical great in a run game, just mauling people. I don't think that's really what he is, but I do think that with his athleticism, with his length, those type of things, he can pass block on uh, the blind side that you have there, you know, and uh, that's something that uh, Vanderbilt, you know, definitely needs there. Uh, and that's a position that's really hard to recruit. So if you can pick somebody up like him that immediately can come in, that's already had starting – experience in power five then you get out there and you jump on that as quickly as possible you know and again like i don't under i don't know what they're going to run scheme wise and do those things but you have to have somebody that's going to keep ken seals standing upright and uh for him to reach his potential and getting someone like uh dj here he he can do that so Let's do some things here. I call him D. Is it ju it's Junior right now? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you. Are you okay? Are you drinking? <laughs> I'm not drinking. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, had to ask, man. No, it's okay. Uh, we talked about obviously this is kind of an offensive line theme, uh, but uh, 
I will ask you too while I got you on here. I mean, obviously, you know, you've got uh, uh, coaching turnover there. Ross Amando's not on the staff no more. AJ Blazik is. I hope I'm saying his last name right. What do you, What do you like about him? Have you done any research on him? What do you What do you kind of like about him as a coach? What kind of sticks out? Well, to you? actually, I've already followed him a little bit because he uh, he put out a video for Coach's Choice called "Coaching the Offensive Line in an Up Tempo Offense." And uh, he did that when he was at Rutgers. And uh, I think it was like his first year. So I had already known him just a little bit from that. Um, so I've kind of followed his career. Um, just looking at him, um, and he's had success everywhere he's been except uh, Rutgers. And, uh, you know, when we talked to the guys at the Rutgers site, they said that he coached for the worst head coach that they probably ever had at Rutgers, which is, Chris Ash. which is saying something. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that is saying something. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he went from, uh, Rutgers to North Dakota state. Uh, he's done a really good job there, but the only thing you look at it from that standpoint is North Dakota state seems to be a well machine at the time. So, but, you can always say, you know, he didn't go in there and mess that up. So, you know, that, that, that's a positive. So uh, just looking at the things that he's done at Western Illinois and, and uh, different schools that he's been through, he seems like, you know, he's, he's done a decent job. And, and that's one thing I'll say about Russell Mondo is uh, I didn't think he walked into a good situation from a talent standpoint. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially with all those opt outs and those things. And he did a, pretty good job of, you know, getting those guys to play up to their ability, you know. And then you got Blazik. I think he's walking into a better situation than what Russell Mondo did, you know. And part of that is is getting some of those high school guys that are already in, early enrollees here coming in, also getting, you know, a Zebu. I mean, that helps out. Um, the one thing about the offensive line is, is you know, I, I thought Grant Miller was a really good player right. this past year, and I think that hurt losing him to uh, grad transfer to Baylor. Uh, if they could have kept him around, I actually think the offensive line could have been a uh, uh, pretty decent this upcoming year. Yeah. Uh, any more closing thoughts, offensive line related, anything like that? Things you're kind of looking towards or looking for whenever spring practice starts and uh, heading into the 2021 season. I'm, I'm pretty sure you kind of want to – curious to see who's coming back right <laughs> right yeah that, that would be one thing uh i look forward to seeing those early enrollees you know in spring if you know if we right. get to see that. uh but it'll be interesting to see i want to see who um they have at the center position i think that's something that's going to be big um it'd be interesting to see if that's kevo wesley or if uh, Julian Hernandez possibly plays center, you know, uh, who does that? Uh, so, and you know, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, one thing I really want to, before you can really get into it, is what are they going to do scheme wise? You know, is this going to be, is are they going to be the Cliff Kingsbury slinging around, do those things, or is this going to be more Brian Kelly play with multiple tight ends? Uh, right. We're going to downhill run game a little bit uh, you know it's kind of hard to tell uh, what it's going to look like up front without knowing what they want those guys to do so good stuff uh, I would I'm, I'm curious I, would, I might ask you but I mean we don't know who's coming back who's opting back in things like that I was going to ask you uh, starting starting offensive line go ahead <laughs> no I am not ready for that because I don't know who opted back in. Too early. <laughs> yes. If Cole uh, Clements is back and yeah. Jonathan Stewart. That's going to make a big difference right there. Yeah. yeah, that changes things just a tad. Yeah. So. Right. Awesome. You got anything else to add before we hop off here, Justin? Well, one thing is I'm looking forward to seeing how they recruit the the 2022 class. You know, that's something that's going to be interesting. You know, uh, uh, it's always been – fun to see how they recruit different positions you know Andy Ludwig when he was down there he was real big on I'm not recruiting anybody under six foot six okay all right that's just kind of how it was <laughs> and then uh, when he left that kind of changed a little bit you know and do those things so you know it'll be interesting to see what Blazik's looking for 
uh, what Clark Lee's looking for. Uh, and then also as far as, you know, Barton Simmons and, and just seeing how, what the approach is when they're looking for offensive linemen in the 2022 class. Yeah, not just offensive linemen. I mean, they, they really, it looks like they spent a lot of money on, you know, just putting pieces together in the staff, specifically scouting and recruiting. I mean, that that uh, that office is pretty stacked right now, just in terms of bodies and, and quality people. So I'm kind of curious to see how the recruiting goes in, in that aspect. And like, like you mentioned, you got Barton Simmons kind of heading things up there and the scouting and recruiting. So it'd be kind of, it'd be very interesting to, to see how 2022 goes. Right. And I do like the point that, you know, they've talked about recruiting the state and, mm. you know, being strong in Alabama, Georgia, those Five, places. I think he's uh, I think he said five hundred mile radius or whatever. So yeah. yeah. So once you get in that five hour radius of Nashville or wherever you're at, you know, typically those guys come and visit more and it's easier. So Yeah. All right, Justin, man, appreciate the time. There's a cat behind you right now. <laughs> oh, Jack making an appearance. <laughs> That's right. He's, he can he can resist to be on the uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate the time. Like I said, we're going to do more of these, and uh, like I said, um, you know, offensive line specific on this one. We'll focus on uh, another position in our next one, and we'll just kind of do the same thing. We'll kind of go through, uh, look at profiles, look at film, uh, kind of get Justin's uh, reaction. Uh, thoughts and everything like that so uh like i said doing a lot of new stuff on our youtube channel this year so hope you guys like it we'll uh, continue to improve as hosts and broadcasters moving forward as well so i uh, appreciate justin hopping on uh and being part of the experience here and uh, we'll keep things rolling uh, moving forward don't forget to obviously subscribe to vandysports.com for all the latest football basketball baseball news recruiting as well Nine ninety five a month if you sign up for a year. If you're on that nine ninety five a day plan, you get special special insight from Chris Lee. So uh, absolutely, don't forget about that. And uh, obviously, don't forget to go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, uh, hit the like button, and uh, hit the bell, hit the notification bell. So whenever these new videos pop up, you'll get a notification. You can go view them whenever you got time. So. We appreciate that. We'll load this up here uh, later this evening. We're recording this on Wednesday. So, Justin Angel, appreciate it once again. And uh, everybody, uh, keep checking us out at VandySports.com. Thanks a lot. All right. Appreciate it.